Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised. Hey guys, welcome back to another week of fuckery where you're disappointed but not surprised co host. I'm Addie. I'm Alex. And before we begin this episode, first of all, it's season two. We completed a whole season of a shit show. Yep. <laughs> um, happy New I Year, I mean, everybody. how bad could it fucking get? Like, <laughs> 2021 is going to bring so much new fuckery. I'm fucking scared. We're so excited, but we're so scared at the same time. So we just wanted to give a shout out to our friends before we start this episode off in Texas. Past the Gravy podcast. If you guys haven't listened to their podcast, listen. Listen, they're fucking hilarious. They're fucking hilarious. Their memes are the best. On their Instagram page, it's Past the Gravy Pod. They have the funniest fucking memes. So if you haven't followed them yet, go follow them. Be part of the Gravy Gang. And then follow our Instagram too while you're listening. Yeah, Dis- come on. Yeah, come on. Just fucking follow us. <laughs> Disappointed but not surprised is our Instagram name. Follow us on Facebook. Disappointed but not surprised pod. And our Twitter and our TikTok are fucked up. So. We don't even know what they are. <laughs> it's on DBNS. No, it's, it's podcast DBNS <laughs> on Twitter. For Twitter. And DBNS period. And that's podcast. where you can see Chrissy Bourne's little wiener. Oh, yeah. You can see Chrissy Bourne's little wee wee his little micro wee wee so we want to introduce today's guest jamie jamie hi you bitch hi guys hey jamie Jamie. Jamie's seen chris seaborn's little wee wee too i sure did unfortunately (laughs) jamie i said to her before we started recording i'm like jamie your life is disappointed but not surprised i hope you don't take offense no offense no no offense um, Jamie has a couple of fun story, not fun. They were not fun at the time, but now that you look back at it, it's I like, mean, I no. guess we can laugh, we can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> as we sit in the mental asylum. <laughs> yeah, we can kind of laugh, <laughs> but like, I guess it, that's how our podcast started because everything was so like disastrous in our lives that it was just like, we might as well start this and like make fun of ourselves because no, really. How much worse can it get? I mean, that's this what you have shit to do. doesn't happen to people. The shit that happens to me and Alex does not happen to normal people. And Jamie has been through some shit, too. So, And now she's in a three-way group chat. Chris Seaborn <laughs> has, like, targeted her, too. And is sending her micro-wiener pictures. Has and he pinched, videos. And videos. He pinches his little wee-wee. Yeah. And he's jerking his gherkin, right? Is that what It's not even it a is. gherkin. What is it? No. It's the tiny... It's, it's, it's my... Th- I, Pinky, pinky nail. I feel like my pinky is your pinky's bigger, bigger than that. Your nail. No, it's probably. like yeah. No, it's like my thumb. My thumb's big. It's yeah. It's, it's like my your thumb. thumb. <laughs> my yeah. thumb's way bigger than your thumb. It might be even smaller than this because I have really long dagger nails. It I looks feel like, like no. A, it looks like a pimple on a ball sack. Kind of. Oh That's yeah. And the like. last one. The last. Was it a video or a picture that he sent you? The video. <laughs> Of him just pinching it his looked little like, wee wee, but it looked like he was like it was like a popped pimple. Yeah, because he was coming, he was coming. <laughs> so it looks like it was a white head that was popped. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it looks like a white head, and he can't even jerk it. He just pinches no. it. No, it's, it's too tiny to it jerk. It looks like he's playing the world's smallest violin. But yeah. he loves so this. He pinches it to get himself off. He uses like his thumb and his forefinger and just does this weird pinching thing because there's no up and down motion it's too tiny they're like campy move it's very strange anyway if anybody wants to see it uh go Go on on our twitter Twitter. (laughs) so jamie start it off tell us a little bit about yourself well like what do you want to know just start off the story my life well first of all she's my cousin so i feel like our entire family is cursed seriously yeah don't you think because it's like Come yeah, on. I mean, we every had- single one of us is like ridiculous stories. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. Because what are we doing? I don't know what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. So I, so almost three years ago, it'll be three years this summer, actually. Okay. How quick did that go? So fucking fast. So anyway, so I broke off well 
No. An start engagement from, got no, okay, broken start off. from 10 years ago. Well, 13 years okay. ago now. Yeah, well, all right. So I was 19 years old. And I started dating one of my friends who we were to, we were friends for about like three years. So um, he admitted he had feelings for me, blah, blah, blah. We got together, 19 years old. Um, and it was good. I guess she don't sound fucking. Convincing. Was it or was it not? Um, I was 19 and yeah. whatever. It was all I knew. Anyway, so fast forward, we were together 10 years. That's a long time. He was obsessed with me. Yeah. Worshiped the ground I walked on or acted That's how like it, it should be until they start to try and like murder you. But yeah. He did really like worship, worship the you. ground she wa- walked on. Like, um, so anyway, so worship the ground I walked on, um, was so in love with me. And, um, so we were living in my so well we've we went from like place to place we we lived with a couple of friends then we um lived with another friend and then um we moved back to my mom's house in my mom's basement and i always wanted to move out and he was always like oh let's save money blah 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 and then i was like all right well We'll just... Meanwhile, he never was getting a serious job. No, he had a good job at the hospital. Making minimum wage. That wasn't minimum wage, Alex. Anyway. um, He had a decent job. Right. Okay. So what was his fucking problem? Great benefits. Anyway, he just was not a good saver. He was always doing his fucking stupid shit with like his hobby or whatever, which is fine. But anyway, so... He um he just didn't know how to save. Yeah. He didn't know how to save and Me either. I <laughs> didn't really eat I mean no I did. I did. So anyway, so finally um I was always like I don't want to get engaged living in my mom's basement. I always said that because it was just like you don't no You're living in mommy's basement. I, exactly. So anyway, so then um, it just was never happening. Like we were never like moving out. It was always like, oh, let's just save money. Let's just stay here, save money, well, blah, blah, blah. Well, you fall into that easy trap of it too. Mm-hmm. And then you get like complacent. Right. But if you're but not he wasn't saving. saving. Yeah. So anyway, so then, um, you know, we're together for eight years at this point. It's a long time. Exactly. I was always asking like... Or like, you're going to pop the question, blah, blah, blah. Finally, he does. And um, I'm like, all right, well, now we're planning a wedding. So we have to save for that. Yeah. Um, And I was always like, all right, the money that we get from the wedding, we'll just buy a house. So whatever. So we ended up staying in my mom's basement. So then, well... So we're pl- so we're planning a wedding. My parents gave us probably twenty thousand dollars. A good amount of money for because the we're we're you know we're two months out of the two months out from getting married. Okay. At this point, so the week of my bachelorette party. Okay. We and this is two months before the wedding. I go to the florist and put down two thousand dollars more Mm -hmm. for the flowers so we get into the next day we get into this um argument because now we're together 10 years yeah the living arrangements are not ideal so parents basement we're in my parents basement and was there like a separate my, entrance or no? It's like through the no. House, through the yeah. house. And my uncle Steven. My uncle Steven <laughs> is also in the basement with us, but in his own room. Okay. So considering the uh, the living arrangements and the lack of privacy, I thought we had a pretty good sex life. Okay. Considering the situation. The situation also we're together 10 years but whatever we're young 
So it how many times be. a week were you fucking? We were. It was probably like two weeks since the last time Ooh. we had sex. So at yeah, this, I'd be like at this point at the bed. But, but you have somebody else living in the basement with you. I'd and go in my car and fuck him in an alley. That's you. That's though. me. Yeah. I'd be that's like, you, we're though. going but, for an ice cream drive. We'll be back. And then I'd but, fuck him in the back seat of my car. But that's but me. Let's, but not even that. But like you're with somebody for 10 years. Two weeks is not even that bad. No. If you I ask have me. like a horny 15 year old's mentality though. But you're not, you, have you, you, were My you with somebody? My relationships fizzle out after about a year because like <laughs> I date felons and okay. then they all like relapse so, on drugs. So 10 years later, <laughs> 10 years later, 10 years later. The longest has been a year. So no, anyway. I get that. Like two years, I mean, two weeks isn't that long. I mean, year you want to say we're having lack of intimacy and it's like people go six months without having sex so two weeks Mm -hmm. calm down anyway so um we got into an argument about that and I'm like all right whatever so we end up having so okay so we're leaving that weekend for my bachelorette party we have sex the night before he tells me he wants to have my babies okay like you guys are getting married that's like a standard conversation yeah but but i mean like he was just like let's just have a baby let's just have a baby you're getting married that's standard and i was like well no like we're getting married in two months like we can do that after and when we have our own home and all that stuff so anyway so um i leave for my bachelorette party on a Friday. friday and um we come back on a monday so Friday night, um, I end up check. So he was working. He picked up. The, he picked up a shift. Okay. Um, because he he okay. So he worked at the hospital like during the week, and then on the weekend on Saturday night he used to work at a restaurant. Yeah. So he um picked up a shift that Friday because I was going to be away. So I didn't think anything of it, of course, and. For some reason, like something we we shared each other's location. Something told me to just like check his location. That belly barometer never fails. Yeah, and it was like I I barely I never ever checked his his location. I trusted him with every fiber of my being. I guess he never gave I you a never, reason not to. Yeah, like I thought like, like I can vouch for this. I like, was the end was, all be all for him. Yes, and he was a stand up guy. I can vouch for this a hundred percent. Like so, he was a douche sometimes to people, but but that that's different being a douche to some people and being a douche to his fiance. But right, he and he never her. was. He never was. He treated me very very well. I do yes. have to say that. But so anyway, so something told me to just check his location, and I think it was just like I haven't heard from him. Like let me see if he's home yet. Blah blah blah. Check his location. I see that like so the restaurant that he worked at next door was a hotel. Okay. So I check his location and it says that he's at the hotel. So I'm like, what are you doing? Did you leave work yet? And he was like, um, doesn't answer me for like a little bit. And he, he always would answer me like right away, blah, blah, blah. I was like, hello, like, babe, like, where are you? Blah, blah, blah. Um, did you leave work yet? Like, are you home? This and that. And then he was like, oh, I'm leaving work now. I was like, oh, well, why does your location say you're at the Best Western? Like, what did you take a co-worker a there? classy place. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what did you? Go to the Hilton? Yeah. I was like, what did you take a co-worker there? And I, I, I was like, half kidding, but not because yeah. it's just like, you know, it's like, what, what are you doing? At the best Western. And then um, he was Getting like, drinks at the bar, no, babe. Uh, and they then got a great bar. One of his coworkers, whatever his name was, I forgot what his name was at the time. And he was like, I brought him and his girl from there because he was hammered. I had to walk him up to the room, blah, blah, blah. Comes up with this whole story. Right. So I don't answer at first because I'm, I'm on my bachelorette weekend and we're at the bar. 
Yeah. And we're having fun or whatever. So then he was like, babe, I love you. Are you there? Of course. Uh, w- 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 come on. Because I was like, oh, what did you take a co-worker there? And he's like, oh, come on. Um, I love you. Blah, blah, blah. Jane, blah, blah, blah. Because I wasn't answering. So I was like, no, yeah, whatever. So whatever. Let it go. Didn't think anything of it. Because I never had a reason not to believe him. Right. And you guys are married him. in like two months. Yeah. So anyway, so then the next day, like he's all like talkative and blah 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 probably wants feeling, to know what we're doing oh, yeah have fun girls blah, blah, blah. yeah Suck my fucking dick now. feeling guilty feeling guilty blah 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 but like i was also like in a place where i think like deep down i just was not ha- like i just wasn't happy yeah like alex can vouch for that and know and knows that like i just was like I I don't think that you were truly like in love, like passionately in love with him. No. Like you loved him for him because you guys were together for so long. He was like, all I knew. Right. And, yeah. And you and de- you feel like you should be just going through with the steps at this point. Exactly. Right. And that that's what it was. It was just like, like we're together for this marriage. long. The next step is the baby. You've right. been together 10 years. And then once the wedding comes, it's like, <gasps> but he, he's like, he was a good, he was a good guy. Like, I'm not going to like fucking sit here and bash him. You could be a great guy, but if there's no passion, then but like, there was no passion behind it. No. And also like he had no drive. Like he was not driven to like get out of the basement. He was not driven to like, give you a better life and like right that's something that you should look for in a person absolutely right they're just like comfortable living in your fucking soon to be in-laws basement next to uncle steven like that ain't a fucking home no yeah. right and then so, saying oh I'm, i want to have a kid like, the it, night it before won't grow, right won't we, won't when grow. you were ready so we're gonna get to that so that so saturday comes or whatever he's very talkative this and that and um asking what we're doing and i'm sending videos of like my cousins acting stupid and whatever Standard. like we're laughing <laughs> and um so anyway so saturday night comes passes sunday comes and i get into a so this is why i said like i just feel like deep down i wasn't happy yeah now i get into a huge fight with my cousins like i end up just blow- yeah, you. no you gabby and megan I end up blowing up because I think it was, you know, it's always something that's going on like Internally. deep within and you, you. And I was projecting you're closest with because you can, and they're always going to be there. It's like you fight with your mom because you had a bad day at work or you fight with your husband because something happened, but they never did anything. But it's like, you're the most fucked up to the ones that you're the closest. With. Right. So I was they never leaving you. Right. <laughs> and I was, I was projecting. <laughs> So I ends up blowing up on my cousins. Like, so all I wanted to do was just go to the beach. Cause like, it was like a shitty weekend at like weather wise. Yeah. And, um, all I wanted to do was go to the beach and it took them an hour to get down to the beach. They we were, were hammered. Shit. They were hung over. Then we started drinking was hammered. Right. So finally we get to the beach and I'm you know, this Brazilla. chill. I just want to chill. I Yeah, like I just wanted, to, this is the one thing I wanted to do. So finally we're doing it. So they're like, oh, we're going to go get pizza. They go fucking missing for hours. And First I'm like, all, what? We sat on the beach for three hours. We took photos on the we, beach. No, yeah, we, we took did. professional photos on the fucking beach. So don't say there we were that we were there for five minutes. We were there for like three hours. Well, regardless, whatever it was, I was pissed off because um, they, you know, went missing or whatever. So then um, I get back to the room and they're all there and hammered. So I start flipping out on them saying like, oh, it's my bachelorette weekend. And all I wanted to do was go to the beach, blah, blah, blah. But what really was going on was I was... I can tell an attitude change with my ex. So um, we had no idea. We just thought you were like freaking the fuck out. 
Yeah, like I didn't tell them anything that yeah, I was feeling, or even that we you were, were having a bridezilla moment. Yeah, or even that, like, um, you know, during the week that we were having, like, you could tell issues even from phone stuff. issues with your man, something's amiss. Right, you can just tell. So oh, that's the oh, thing. Even see, he's them, always text, and that's the thing. Like he was always the like answer right away, or like text me all day and blah 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 and it was just like you like i could tell you know, that like something was something off wrong. so i could tell something was off oh whatever so i call him and i'm like me and my cousin's just gone to a huge fight i'm crying this and that he seems like so uninterested he's like i can't hear you um text me as if blah, we're blah, in, blah. like on mars right well we're i was outside Ocean city maryland yeah, yeah you get great service well i was outside and like the wind was the wind was blowing okay. and i think that that's what he was talking about but you know My ass. i'm always defending people even when yeah, they fuck no, me we're over just <laughs> fuck you. my fucking asshole so anyway so he just was like very cold that day so anyway so the rest of the night was like pretty awkward had a car ride home like next next day like we drove home it was awkward um and to say the i least. mean the bond that i have with my cousins is like really like sisters. unlike We're other anything sisters. Your sisters. yeah it's really unlike anything so anyone getting like blowout fights like that and be fine, and be fine. And like we're fine i didn't feel i mean it was a little awkward i didn't feel uncomfortable because it's like it's family. It is I love them. Is. And I love you too. And like, you so, know, we flip out on each other sometimes. Like, yeah, it is what it is. So anyway, I so did my cousins and then it's like, all right, we're good. We give each other a hug and it's over. Yeah. I mean, we can say the meanest fucking shit to each other and, but we don't even have to talk about it again. And no. we're like, just fine. Yeah. But anyway, that's not the point. Anyway. So I, we get home. Um, he's working overtime because I didn't get because uh, I was getting home late blah 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 so um he texts me and he's like come outside we need to talk so I'm like okay like did your stomach drop though so because Sunday was a little weird and he was like very co- he was like cold yeah. and like not who he normally is I knew it was like something but i thought it was more of because we got into that fight like a couple days prior to leaving i thought it was going to be like a continuation of that like talk yeah so i go outside and we're sitting in the car and he's just like i have not i'm not happy i haven't been happy for a long time and i can't marry you so I'm just like, okay. Did you feel like you got punched in the gut right at that moment? Or did you expect something like that? I kind of, it's, I didn't feel like I got, okay. So it was like the rug was pulled out from under me. Yeah. But in a weird way, I had this like sense of calm. Yeah. You're like, oh shit, this is good. Because I feel like deep down you knew knew. that he wasn't Wasn't the the one. one. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, like if that's how you feel, then I mean, I didn't say this, but I was thinking this in my head. I I said, okay. And I was thinking in my head, like, all right, well, then that's what it is. Like, then we're not going to get married. And, um, but then another part of me was like, no, like, He's lying. There's no way. Like, he's obsessed with me. He's so in love with me. He was just telling me how much he loved me. We, we, um, so actually on Sunday, I, when he was acting weird, I called him. I went to the bathroom and I called him and I was like, I just, you know, I'm having the worst day, worst weekend. And because other stuff was going on with other people, other people yeah. on that weekend, I was like, I'm having the worst weekend. And, um, I just want to make sure that you and I are okay. Like we're fine. Right. And he was just like, he was like, yeah. Um, he's like, no, we're good or whatever. And it was like probably like eight o'clock and he like was pretending he was sleeping. I'm sure he wasn't. Yeah. Um, or whatever. And then 
I was, not tell you I was over just the like, phone. I was just like, okay. And On then, your yeah, yeah, no, but and ruin your day even more. I was waiting for him to tell me he loved me first, and he did. Yeah. And he was like, I love you. And I was like, I love you too. And then we hung up the phone. So I was like, okay, I feel better now. Like, he said he loved me. Like, he wouldn't have, he would have just hung up if he, you know. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So, anyway, so, um, so I was like, there's no way. Like, I, just, I was completely blindsided completely blindsided like i said like you get dropped so in love with me party and then he breaks up with you like that day i mean the tuesday before i'm dropping another two grand on our wedding and he already had plans to cheat on me yeah so okay so anyway before the cheat the you don't know about the cheating part yet so i say well is there someone else because that's where my head goes to because if no this is happening out of leaves. the blue. Yeah. So he, he sighs and is hesitant. And I go, is there someone else? And he goes, no, but I'm finding myself attracted to other people. And I've never felt like that before. And I'm like, all right, well, we've been together for 10 years. Like, it's kind of that's natural. normal. I'm like, allowed to be attracted to other people and I could be madly in love with my guy. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, and then he's like going off like you, you, I think you're depressed. I think you need that you, this, you, that, blah, well, blah, blah. Gonna point out all the things wrong with you instead of so, just right, shit themselves to make projection. you feel like right. you're the one that did everything wrong. Right. So I'm like, okay. So yeah, there's something, there's something wrong with me. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I am depressed. Like I'm thinking all this stuff. Uh, maybe I, I should go to therapy. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. So all this is like going through my head, like literally in, in the, in, in that car. in a couple seconds. So I'm like, I know, blah, blah, blah. So then, um, he was like, you could keep the ring, yeah, right, I'm gonna sell this we shit. can we can we'll figure out what are we gonna do with sadie which is our dog together and i said well i'm gonna she's gonna stay with me and you can see her whenever you want to okay blah 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 so um anyway so then we get back to the house and he's like can you bring the ring out and i said you just told me that i could keep it i was like i would i would like to you know, like that's mine. So then, um, he was like, keep it like an asshole. So I'm like, the fuck? Okay, so then bitch. because I am the person that I am, I'm like, well, I got you something from ocean city. <laughs> I want to give it to you. So I hope it was a kick in the dick. Yeah. So I, 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 and I grabbed the ring and I bring it all out to him because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be, I don't want to be a spiteful bitch, like whatever. Like, I don't want to be like bitter or anything like that. Like, I'll just, oh, you're if way you, nicer than we are. No, I know, I dude. I took that and pawned that shit dude, and then bought myself a Valentino. I know. Mm -hmm. But this is just who I am, unfortunately, but whatever. <laughs> So no, that's a good thing to not be like me and Alex. <laughs> yeah, it's not unfortunate. It is really good though for you. So well, I mean, so anyway, yeah. so I bring the ring out and um, what I got him from Ocean City, and he just like shrugs, like looks like he like feels bad or whatever. Obviously, like, I'm really upset, and I think it was more like when I think back, it was more of like, okay, now I'm almost fucking 30 years old. I have to start my life over again. He's all I know. Am I ever going to be happy with somebody else? Blah, blah, blah. How am I going to be able to, uh, oh, anyway. All right. So yeah, but think of all those people that I have been with one woman for their entire life. They got together at fucking 15 and they got divorced at like 50 something years old. So thank God you're not that no, I know. It was only 10 years. 10 years is a long time, but it ain't that much compared to where we are. Right. Um, I'm texting him and I'm like, you know, like, what do I have to do for you to come home to me? Um, you know, it's all the, all those like steps in like grief where you're like bargaining. Um, if you, if, uh, um, 
like he was unhappy with his job and he wanted to just work at the restaurant. So I'm like, just quit, just quit and, and, and just work at the restaurant full time, like whatever this and that. Like I was just like, just like anything yeah, just anything for him to, to come back him, to appease him. Yeah. And, um, which is like the worst thing you can do at the best thing you could do at that point is to just fucking disappear. Right. Ladies, if this ever happens to you, just dis-a-fucking-peer. Yeah, like, that's fuck like, you. Disappear. That's, like, next you to don't, impossible. Yeah. yeah. Disappear. So that's so I was, like, basically, like, begging begging him, like, begging him to love me. Yeah. Which I will never absolutely do never do again. Yeah. Because of that situation. Anyway, so a um, few days go, few days go by, like, um... Like we're texting back and forth. He's like basically like you, you like playing victim, like you this, you that. Um, you took me for granted. I'm sure I took you for granted. Blah blah. blah. Fuck yeah, we did. We took each other for granted. We're together ten years. Anyway, so um, then one day we're texting and he texts like this weird, the, just like something so simple. It was just like oh nice. And then like something, something else. I forgot what it was. And I was like, yeah, it was like a sentence after that. I can't remember what it was, but it was was like, like, oh, 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 nice. Not too bad. So I go, so he texted to me by accident. And so I go, um, are you talking to somebody else already? This is literally like what? Two days after we broke up. Literally. That this, this happens. And, um, not too much longer. Not too much long. Oh, nice. Not too much longer. About her getting off of work. Yeah. That's what some, it was. Some, who knows? Yeah. So anyway, so I was like, so I was like, he's talking to another girl. Like, mm-hmm. that's the way that he would like say And you say have something. the intuition. Like. Right. So I go, are you talking to, I was like, what are you talking to somebody else already? And he was just like, yes. Ooh. He admits it. And, um, at least, you know, this is, no, I don't think this was like probably like a week after was it was it a week, that long? maybe like, okay. Like, all right. Five, it was a few days. Yeah. It had to be a few it days. It doesn't even matter, but no, I know. But he, so then he goes, he admits to it. He goes, yes. And then, um, I don't know. I think I just like fucking go off on him. Well, no, you said it. Is it so-and-so? Oh, I was like, who? And he was like a manager from the restaurant. And I was like, oh, so-and-so and he's like yeah and I was like is that who you were with when I saw that your location was at the Best Western and he was like yes and it's so funny how our intuition is so fucking spot on because like you randomly joked about that like oh what are you there with somebody from work I like, know it's a fucking joke and then we look back at that and we're like how did I f- we know I feel like you deep down knew you knew like it's so funny that we can pinpoint one person like my ex like some bitch's booty picture but picture I sent it to Alex you're like there's no way she looks like a meth whore and I was like no I'm telling you something's going on fast forward they're in a fucking relationship like from one pic we know and you found it out from Spotify Spotify that was a crazier thing but we always know like how do we say something as a joke and we are like yo like that is what it is we just know i just well just you know the person yeah you just know the person and it's just like yeah but i think a woman's intuition is fucking fire well four to five years prior to that i so remember how on snapchat you can see people's best friends oh yeah alex was always in mine i i but you can see you could see your friend's best friends. Yeah, no, I know that. The top three. Right. And that's how you knew who was fucking each other. Right. You always knew who was fucking each other. So he had a best friend who was a girl. So I questioned him about it. And he yeah, was like, knew. oh, I worked with. No, 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 no. That was a different. That was a different thing. Oh. <laughs> That, oh, so but now this is all around that? the same time. No, like he was trying to. He was helping some girl get a job that we knew but um yeah. but he but he lied to me and he was like oh i'm going in early because of this and then i saw in like his messages on like once again something told me to go and into his messages the biggest whore in fucking lindenhurst at the time so i fucking highly doubt that but yeah who knows so anyway so um 
I saw his best friends on Snapchat or whatever, and I questioned it. And then I was at work at the time and I was really good friends with the people that worked there. So we all did this like fucking investigation, found out that like they were snapping back and forth. And um, I signed in on his Snapchat and she messaged, no, but she took a snap and was like, and sent it to him and was like, I don't want um, to text you. And like, I guess he was like looking to get a tattoo or some stupid shit like that. And he, like, she sent like the number or whatever. And I was like, that's fucking shady. Like, why wouldn't you want to text him or whatever? So, um, so anyway, so he admits it and he was just like, oh, I was just looking for the attention, blah, blah, blah. So this is five years, four or five years prior to my bachelorette weekend. So, um, so that's what made me think like, is he doing that again? Cause like once that trust is kind of broken, you never really like get get that back. And I, it's like a mirror, like it breaks, you can put it back together, but the cracks are like still there. Yeah. And it's, and, but I did, I did trust him, but I guess it was like that little part of me that just didn't because of that, you know? So he had the other thing with the other girl. Remember when I kicked him in the ass? At Revolution Bar? This was this was that that. Oh, that was that? This was this. That was that the Snapchat best friend. So anyway, so that's what made me like what's it called? Start thinking. Like my radar went off because it was just like or like the sirens went off and it was like, is this what he's doing again? Mm-hmm. Is like for attention or whatever. But then I found out that they were like, he physically cheated on me. Like that he didn't physically cheat on me. So because, and I guess, cause I was like young, I was just like, oh, well, he's just not physically cheating on me. So it's whatever. Like he's just looking for attention from other girls and, um, I let it go. And then this happened and he's like a huge attention seeker. Yeah. He lies about shit. Just very insecure. When when he met my ex the first time, he told me that he told him that he was so broke because he lost all his money in the stock market. Never, he never, never invested in the stock stocks. market. <laughs> then he told him, cause my ex had like very bad back problems. He told him he was a chiropractor. Like why are you even <laughs> lying like, about what this are you shit? Even fucking saying? And I don't even find out about this in pro- until like probably like a year ago. That's she tells so me all bizarre. this. I told her la- later on because I didn't want to like diss him to her because. So who knows what he said about to this bitch from work? No, that's exactly. Yeah, like he was please. Like, oh, I'm so unhappy. We're yeah, like we're roommates. Broken. We're in an open relationship. I've had that sense. We're yeah. roommates. <laughs> we don't have sex anymore. Right. Meanwhile, what, what was two weeks? So stop. So he admits it or whatever. I go off because I have a f- sharp fucking tongue when you piss me off. That's really it. And then I messaged the girl because I know who she is. I would have done the same thing. I got her phone number because oh, my I fu- friend. I her on Facebook too for my fake, fa- for my fake <laughs> Facebook. Yep. Ashley Dominguez. So, yeah. Um, I was trying to stalk her a little bit. My friend is a legit psycho like she knows that she's she's a psycho that's bad literally worse than us literally an fbi agent found out where she lives her phone number oh yeah where she works everything yeah um in the matter of seconds so anyway so i have her phone number now so i message her this nice long thing whatever and obviously no answer which is fine so basically he cheated on me and left me for someone else two months before we're supposed to get married. That sucks. And she looks like Mimi from the Drew Carey show just saying she has a uh, blue eyeshadow in all her Facebook pictures. Blue eyeshadow is so tacky unless you do it right. <laughs> this is but, tacky as fuck. Like, whatever. The Mimi tacky. Whatever. Like who know the thing is is like. I don't blame her. Like, yeah, she knew that he was engaged or whatever. And like, that's shitty to do s- to somebody. Yeah. Like, but here's the thing. who knows what he was saying he, yeah, to he her. He never said anything straight but to her. But here's the thing. Like, we went to that restaurant where they were working at for her birthday that year. 
And she was like, and I went there like months yeah, but before some this. Don't have morals anyway, so whatever. Especially if you wear doesn't. blue eyeshadow. And so that bitch needs to like. That's why I friended her on Facebook. Exactly. Well, yeah. whatever. They're not together anymore. But of course not. Bumskies. So that's it. That's my story. That's and my. If you're di- listening, but, I hope your dick falls off. But it was the best thing. That ever happened to me. So like moving on from something that like, like you're at your bachelorette party, you come home. He's like, no, I'm not going to go through with the wedding. You find out he's fucking somebody else that he works with at the motel while you're on your bachelorette party. Like moving on from that. Sometimes you look back and you think that this is the worst moment of your life. And then like fast forward two years later, three years later, and you're like, God damn, thank God that happened. And it, I mean, it was, it was really hard. Like the, the healing process was very, I was, I you wouldn't get out of bed. You were like really I, upset. Yes. And I would be upset too. I wouldn't get out of, I didn't get out of bed for a while. Yeah. Like I didn't want to do, I mean, I had to force myself we had like family parties and like we, I would just sit with you in the bedroom. Yeah. Like, like I was, was like just downstairs, much. just like crying. Like I was just, it was just very overwhelming. It was just, it was, it was bad, but, um, it made me a better person. Like I grew from it Yeah, and I am so much, I was even saying to Alex the other day, like I am a much happier i'm i'm a completely different person than who i was oh, two years ago i am so much happier you got your glow up on yeah like i you know hindsight is always twenty twenty. they say and i just i was i was settling and and a no shade do. no shade to him because he's not he's not a terrible he's not a bad human being He's not. He what he did to me was fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. You could have went about that a different way. But listen, I always said if he wasn't happy and he wanted to call the wedding off, fine. But the way he went about it was fucking terrible. So that's my beef with him. Sometimes you have to make it dramatic to make sure it's cut off, though. And I'm not defending him in any way possible. But like, I don't know. It's just like. I, I've done it where I ruin things so bad to make sure they'll never or or even like it has to be ruined so bad to know that it's completely over. Yeah. Like it's got to go toxic. So the toughest part still is now if someone can just pretend that well and act like they were so in love with me and worship the ground I walked on. How am I going to be able to believe anybody again? Well, then you're just That's me and the Alex part. and you don't believe a thing anybody says and you go into every relationship super skeptical and you're just like an asshole. Yeah, and I yeah, feel like I a- do, but I just... I give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And you should. And you should. I, yeah. Like I go into everything I mean, cold, like me, looking for red me flags. Me too. I'm like, I, this I'm is waiting never going to happen. But waiting you go into it. it like open hearted and I'm just like, not the same. I'm like, no, because I see this and this is going to go I'm wrong. like make up fake dating apps to like m- see if somebody's like if I start seeing somebody like make up fake dating apps to see if they're on anything. If they are, see how they talk to the other girls. Like I'm a fucking see, psychopath like that just because I'm I, looking for yeah it to fall out. And I get that. But it's like, why? Like, I just I don't I just don't want to live that way. Yeah, like I no. don't want to do, I don't no. want to do That takes too much energy. And if I have to put that much energy right, into it, then the I should, then that we, it takes to recover we don't, from when you find out about well, it. Then yeah, I'd if rather I have to do on. that, then we don't need to be together. That's true. That's how I feel. No, you're better I'm not than doing us. that. I think Alex and I have been burnt too many times that it's just like, or just have gone through so much shit, but it's like nothing phases us anymore. Like if some, if I found out that like I was dating somebody in love with them, like, and they were like, 
fucking like men on craigslist in my backyard i'd be like well there's the ball drop like, I, yeah. I was like, waiting like for th- this. that's what it was <laughs> i've been waiting like yeah. you watch the undoing with nicole kidman yeah and we're like i could see that happening to us like finding out my husband was cheating on somebody bashed her in the head with a fucking billy club and then like <laughs> lied about everything and then tried to drive my son off a bridge like i'm like that would happen to me <laughs> yeah (laughs) but you're better than us that you don't want to go and like go into relationships like that I think it's a good start to like see it out fresh and like not look for the worst I mean I'm skeptical don't get me wrong of course I have trust issues because the person that I trusted with every fiber of my being fucking betrayed me and and I just want to like not to cut you off yeah I just want to like put a side note in here he honestly fooled and betrayed all of us yeah because i'm not one to get like played around i he was the i was blindsided everyone was shocked I, his family was shocked my family was shocked and he li- like my my parents like he lived with us yeah you know what i mean like they they were shocked I, so I, she after i got off the phone with her that day the next day when she told me I was like almost in tears because I was like our friends were shocked. I was like, "What?" I'm like, his him? friends were shocked. Yeah. Like he didn't he didn't communicate anything to anyone. Yeah, I I was like, "There's no way." Like what? But thank God that happened instead of fast forward like five years into a fucking oh, marriage. Oh, hundred percent. And then not you're even, just dude. Not even like. Wh- what if we would have gotten married and then it happened that next a week. year yeah. late yeah or even that and then like what you got pregnant or something and yeah. or we get we get married and we get a divorce like divorced a year later like I don't, or months later it was like so much better than that oh happened. yeah yeah like i said it was the best thing that ever happened to me In one of the worst things that happened one of the worst things that happened to me but one of the best things that ever happened to me so moral just because of the emotional um trauma scarring yeah the like yeah exactly i go to therapy and my therapist was like you you know that's a traumatic that's trauma it's a traumatic experience i was talking you know to being blindsided the day, they were like well you have ptsd from that relationship and i'm like no shit yeah <laughs> most of us do so moral of the story well, guys just go into a relationship looking for the red flags. <laughs> Just go into a re- relationship looking for good ass dick, and you'll be fine. And then, and then if it pans out, it pans I'm still out. waiting yeah. for that. So, <laughs> guys, that. hit Jamie up. <laughs> I need to be slayed. Yeah. So, if Jamie, you can slay me, show. say what's your Instagram handle? It's at Jame. J A M E underscore Lee L E E E three E's. Hit up Jamie, send Hit her, her some up. dick pictures, and uh, slay away. And not you, Seaborn. Not you, fucking Chris Seaborn, with your <laughs> micro dick. All right, guys. Before we close out, we are gonna get into our confession, confession corner. corner. All right, first confession wish i wasn't so kinky i wish i wasn't so kinky and dirty minded i like to come to the most degrading stuff and after i come i feel like there's something wrong with me i feel like this is an autobiography of me (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna be like addy did you write this i wrote this in myself no i'm kidding i wish i could get off on normal sex but i literally have a hard time even getting wet to it I've been this way since I was like 12, so it's not that porn made my kinks worse, but I haven't ever told my boyfriend or hook up about it because I'm too ashamed and doubt any otherwise respectful man will be turned on by it. Um, I'm just going to say this. Let it fucking fly, I was going to say, bitch. let your freak flag fly. Do not hold back don't hold back because if they're not going to be into the shit that you're into they're not the one for you amen right. there is what is that there's a fucking dating app for bdsm hold the fucking phone i was on it for once like doing research i wasn't it wasn't even yeah, my real yeah, picture yeah. i swear <laughs> to god kinku 
K I N K O O. It's kinky fet BDSM dating. So you can go on a dating app, Kinku, that is actually for people that have like, you know, furries. They're into like beating BDSM. They'll choke the fuck out of you. And like you can meet people that are into your own shit. So do not hold back. And then there's kink, kink D. It's kink BDSM dating life. You can go on, okay, double list. Go on double list. Do a Claude, go on double list. <laughs> Find a fucking fox to fuck, the little the furry, witch's finger. Find your partner and do not hold back. That, you know what? Honestly, life's too short for fucking shitty sex and sex that it's not fulfilling in your Seriously. life. Seriously. No, this is actually. I'm going to take that advice from now on. That's why I stormed out last week. Life is too short for shitty sex. I stormed out last week. Life is too short for shitty sex. That's going to be my motto. I wasn't getting my orgasm. I fucking booked. He came over two nights ago and he made everything right. Sometimes you got to walk out on, you know, when you're not getting your fucking needs, walk out. There'll be somebody Sometimes else to fill them. Like exactly. Need to be scolded. Yes. No. And once they learn. Yeah. Yup. He clipped his fingernails and he was fucking ready for action this past weekend. <laughs> Don't settle for that. Don't settle. <laughs> So either you're going to find somebody that's into your shit or maybe the person that you real lo loves you will adapt. So don't settle for shitty sex. All right, Al, you up. I left a bowl of ground beef behind the sheetrock wall in my shitty landlord's basement when I moved out. <laughs> Only about half a pound. But the, the basement had a... Definite mold problem already, so I can only imagine what kind of monstrosity formed from it. <laughs> the couple who owned the house were assholes and the worst people I've rented from. I also wiped my nuts on the door handle on the way out. I would do that, too. That's kind of that's fucking the confession. And that's confession? Yeah, that's kind of fucking awesome. So I'm really fucked up. And, like, one of my old co-workers' car was a fucking disaster. And, like, he was really heavy at the time, like, 450 pounds i'm not even kidding and like you would go in his car and he would have so much barbecue sauce all over the floor like, like containers of ranch just mcdonald's like it was disgusting so this was like a funny prank to me i don't know why i thought it was so funny but i was eating sushi one day and i was like full and i didn't want it anymore so i put the rest of the sushi rolls underneath his driver's seat <laughs> <laughs> oh my god ew my it was other, probably so smelly and my other co-worker's wife made me mussels like really yummy mussels and garlic so i was done with the, mu the mussels and i put the rest of the mussels underneath my co-worker's passenger seat that's so amazing car just stunk like seafood but it's the smell. He probably had no he had idea. No idea. <laughs> he had no fucking clue. Sometimes when I was bored, I would just put like fucking hot dog buns in his like door handles. <laughs> so honestly, I'd probably do the same thing with the burger meat. All right, last one. I sold my stinky socks. So I know some of you sell feet pics. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Or we try step to. Step right up. Step right up. Coming You up. do? Yes. Where? We try. No one fucking work. buys them, but we're trying. We've tried really I hard. I want to do that. But I went the extra mile. I would send my potential customers those feet pics for free, and then I would send them pics of my socks. I used to work in an office, so I mostly wore dress socks and dress shoes, which is a huge fetish for a lot of guys into feet. So anyway, I had my regulars and I would sell them my socks for 40 to $50 a pair. All of my customers love them super stinky, so I would have to wear them 10 to 12 times. That justified the price. I got a different job recently and moved country. But that was also a good extra money. One of my customers was so obsessed with my feet that booked a hotel room and paid me to go so he could worship my feet. That was $100. But he had what? some of the best days in his life. I miss making people happy. I, we've tried to sell our socks. What? But we're assholes. We're just like 
fuck you. We're not giving anything for free. Well, they want everything for free. They want That's everything for free. Like, you even squished a bug on the bottom of your UGG for that guy. Yeah, for that guy to buy it. And then for that goes, guy to buy. Oh, I'll get what? on Wednesday. Uh, um, um, uh, How come almost? I don't know about this? Yeah, we try to sell our socks and feet pictures Sorry, on Reddit for, like, side. a really that. long time. Wait. And then this guy was like, I want you, I want you, your UGGs. Like, I want to buy UGGs. And Alex had a pair of UGGs. That were like old. I'm like, I'm not buying Uggs for this fucking guy. And yeah. He goes, like but, he goes, but I want you to have a bug squished on the bottom of them so I could yeah. like jerk off to it. So there was a cricket in her what basement. What goes so, on? So I, I was like telling my ex and I was like. Yo, people are weird. Right. But we welcome Humans this. are weird. And I was yeah. telling my ex, I was like, oh, this is what this guy wants. He goes, oh, there's a dead cricket in the basement. <laughs> Hold on. So he goes down there with my Ugg, smashes the dead cricket, uh -huh. and comes back upstairs. We take a picture, we send it to the dude, and then he goes, oh, well, oh, yeah, I'd buy it, but I don't get paid till Wednesday. We had some guys. <laughs> it's Friday. We had some guys want to buy used condoms from us, so and like, like jizzed in underwear. So Alex and her ex were like going to town. She was keeping the underwear on while fucking. He would cream pie in them. Yeah. And like she had like a laundry basket full I waiting for I am so her. spent right now. <laughs> Are you joking? I swear no. to fucking God. Wait, where do you see, where do you like Reddit. get these requests from? We have a from? Reddit page where I like Reddit? promote my OnlyFans. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> so it's all like linked to our Reddit page, and then they like us I want to sell they, my sweaty gym clothes. Like and then they would hit us was, up on Kick. Yeah, so I'd be texting thirty dudes off Kick per night, literally. Send me this. Send me this. Send me this. I'm sending them like titty pictures. Yeah, well that I know. But I didn't know about this Ugg boot they situation. They wanted us to pee in a fucking in a race and the in a race, like pee race, like literally. <laughs> and my ex was like, "Oh, I'll film it for you guys." <laughs> yeah, so we were gonna like oh pee my God. in some race first, but we were like, "You need to give us money first. But everybody says the same thing. Oh well, we got burnt, so we need one video or See? one picture first. Look at our Reddit. It's a picture of my feet, and it's on a verified foot page. And then I post like that's awesome, like really fucked up comments with the feet pictures. Come lick my tight asshole till it's sparkling clean, <laughs> like on the foot page. You wrote that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just because I wanted to like. Did somebody answer it? Uh, I'm sure like 85 I'm people. I'm so did. done. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, so we tried that for a while, and it really didn't work. No one was sending the money, but we were sending all the fucking feet pics. Yeah, like that's annoying. Yeah, yeah. It's a I waste would not of time. Invite somebody to a hotel room for a hundred dollars, though. They would have to pay me like ten grand to worship my feet in a fucking hotel room for a chance that I'm going to get murdered. Yeah, it's going to be At ten grand. At least ten grand. It's going to be ten grand. And plus, like high end the escort service do like yeah. twenty five grand. Yeah, like, no, they do like mad like high money. end escorts do twenty five grand. Like I ain't doing less than that. Like, nope. look at me, look at them. No. Oh, wait, <laughs> here's one. Sisters, smelly socks worn on a hiking trip, forty dollars each. You know you want to jerk off to our toe smell, and I post a picture of me and Alex's feet. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. With a caption, does this turn you on? <laughs> people comment on it we got mad likes on that but then nobody paid us the money because they're all fake as fuck so if anybody <laughs> wants feet pictures or like used underwear for sale just dm us i have like tons with jizz on them still in the hamper <laughs> i can put jizz in mine we oh, broke where? up almost a year ago they're so crusty <laughs> with the jizz I'll wear crotchless so panties for the new guy and I'll just make him jizz on him and I won't even tell him what it's for. <laughs> like, hun, you want to jizz like on my back and then wipe it with my crotchless panties? <laughs> he won't ask. He won't even just ask. Do it. I say just things do it. to him and he doesn't even question me. That's the best part. He's like, okay. Nothing <laughs> surprises him. Doesn't fucking question. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fuckery. We are your disappointed but not surprised co-hosts, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised. Disappointed but not surprised.